After spending 100 brutal days in the forest VR, Fate had new plans and decided to drop us into a tropical paradise. Except the tropical is the vast open waters and paradise seems to be this cardboard chocolate wafer we're calling a raft. Thanks to the mad scientist Dr. Bebop, all of us are experiencing this world of raft in virtual reality. This means we get to physically throw our plastic hooks, paddle our way to exhaustion, and do whatever this is. Luckily, because of our last 100 day adventure, I won't be taking on this journey alone. I'll be joined by Adam, Danny, and Sheen as we try to make sense of this new world. Once again, our main goal is to make it to day 100, gather as many achievements as possible, and figure out why people are dumping so much bleach in the ocean. All of this was streamed live over at twitch.tv slash zstormgames. Remember, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to clickety clack that like button and slippity slap that subscribe button. I'm ZStorm, and this is 100 Days in Raft VR. As one would expect, starting out on day one, we were plopped down into the middle of an unknown body of water. We were stuck on this 2x2 two two raft with nothing but a hook made from recycled Barbie doll parts and a dream. We knew the first thing that we had to do was expand upon this tiny raft so that we had some room for the four of us just to stand. Casting our plastic hooks into the ocean blue, we all started reeling in various items such as plastic, leaves, and wood planks. These are all extremely vital to our survival as they are required to craft pretty much everything needed in raft. The first thing we needed to expand our raft was a hammer. So I crafted some rope out of the leaves that I just reeled in, mixed it with the wood planks and boom, we were ready for building. Go, oh, we're going off this way, two, three. I made sure to quickly start expanding the raft outwards but not before Kenny decided to strike. Kenny was a shark who enjoyed circling about, looking to take a bite out of our tasty chocolate wafer anytime we turned our backs. No, that's okay. It's okay, shark. Mine, take it, shark. It's okay, shark. I didn't want that anyways. But I mean, come on. How could you get upset at something this adorable? Before we knew it, we slammed into the first island of our journey. Oh, we need to stop here. Oh, thank God. No, 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 no. Sheen and myself decided to stay on the raft, but Danny and Adam had other plans, which inevitably resulted in us getting separated from one another. Where, where are you guys at? Oh my God, you're so far. <laughs> Is it just me and Sheen here? <laughs> I guess it's just me and you, brother. But as you all know, we're Ohana, and Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Sheen and I built some paddles quickly and got the raft zooming back towards our friends. We're coming. We're coming. Where's Danny? Danny, come here. Come on. Come on, hop up, yeah, you Danny. You guys were actually really going fast. We got them back onto the raft, and everyone was finally safe. Now we could get back to focusing on the task at hand, surviving. Got a bunch of seeds? Jellyfish okay. Jellyfish below us. Watermelon. Oh, fun shit. Oh, <gasps> the god of jellyfish! Ooh. Which can be pretty hard to do when you're surrounded by salt water and everyone is dehydrated. So we crafted up a water purifier to clean the water and a cup to drink from said purifier. With our first day down, the sunrise of day two peaked over the horizon. We all had some breakfast to get ready for this beautiful day, but I guess Kenny felt left out of the family meal. No! No! No, it's gonna destroy our crap! What? Oh. Oh. There. After cleaning up Kenny's mess, we decided to expand the raft just a little bit more so we wouldn't risk losing the equipment we have already acquired. Our crew's spirits were dwindling as food was scarce, so I decided to help boost the morale by crafting up a research table. This table could then be used to research different items that we find along our journey and give us new crafting recipes to make our overall living conditions easier. We researched some rope, wood planks, and nails, now allowing us to craft up some collection nets. These bad buckaroos would be perfect for catching any loose trash that has the bright idea of floating right into them. Then, out of nowhere, in the corner of our eyes, we spotted what appeared to be an abandoned raft. We paddled our way over to it, and I tried to make the jump, but Kenny had the brilliant idea of slapping me with his meaty tail fin 9000 and knocked me unconscious. But no worries, as Adam was able to grab the loot from the raft before it sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Oh yeah, I got the recipe to something. Like a pina colada or something. A pina colada? We getting wasted on the raft, let's go. Crossing the streams must have been bad luck because Kenny once again came to visit the wafer. Yeah, you take that one. I hope you get splinters in your teeth. We continued on through the night gathering as much trash as possible to make sure that we are stocked up for the near future. With the sun cresting again, a new aquatic friend came to pay us a visit. Oh guys, look at whale. Big Whale. With the consistent attacks from Kenny, who we had hoped would one day be our friend, we decided to fortify the raft a little bit more. Kenny did not approve of said fortifications. While I was upgrading, Adam was working on catching us some fish to munch on, but he caught something a little too big to fit our grill. Oh, I got a catfish. 
Oh man, look at how big that thing is. <laughs> it, just, it's, it just doesn't fit on our fire. We need the bigger one. With our raft now upgraded, it was time to stop sailing aimlessly. From here on out, we would be choosing the direction of our destiny. At the discretion of the wind, that is. The first stop in that destiny would be actually getting a chance to explore an island for the first time. I get a little bit closer, I'll drop the anchor. I, I dropped the anchor. Anchor has been dropped. Adam dropped the anchor, and I dove in the water to collect some items from the seafloor surrounding the island. By the time I came back up from the ocean floor, Adam was already clearing the island of its trees, something we got really good at in the forest. So I just decided to kick it with Danny and Sheen on the raft and go fishing until Adam was all done. I got I got an old shoe, Sheen. But to our surprise, Adam came back to the raft with shark meat in hand and wearing Kenny's head as a hat. I couldn't believe it. It was only day three, and we had somehow already slain the almighty mighty Kenny. But it was way too early to celebrate because apparently Kenny had a kid. Kenny II followed in his father's fins by continuing to munch on our raft. We proceeded forward with confidence due to Sheen's exemplary open water navigational skills. There's a really big island over to our uh, strait. Over to our strait? <laughs> nice! Nice, guys. All right, where are we headed? Uh, we don't have a compass, okay? Soon after, I caught this beautiful fish and wanted to share my excitement with the rest of the crew. Guys, look it! I have a fresh water in the ocean tilapia. This is not your tilapia, this is my tilapia. Mwah. Oh, I ate it! Oh no! <laughs> With day five rolling around, jealousy got the best of us when she made it onto an abandoned raft first. I now stay you, on the raft. I hope you drown. Sink. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, drown! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Not long after, we spotted this huge island and we knew we had to head straight for it. Our raft smashed into the island and we were off to find what this behemoth had in store for us. Which was apparently a big red bloodlusting pharaoh knockoff. Knockoff or not, this thing was relentless. Our adventure continued into the next day where I encountered my first big tusky friend. What is that? Oh god. Oh god. Whoa! That is a big boar! Terrified of the boar and most definitely underprepared for fighting, I retreated down into the water to gather some scrap metal. Oh no. If you die up there, you're dead. I know. And of course, Sheen thought he was Genji and got sigma in the face. Hello. Oh Son of man. A Do you die? Adam ran off to save Sheen and used some wizardry to bring him back through the side of the mountain? Looking towards the out. Watch out. Whoa! <laughs> We're fine. How did you, you found an invisibility cloak for Sheen and teleportation? That's nuts, dude. We also removed Kenny II from existence and mocked his chomping personality. We left the island behind knowing that we were not ready for the battle with these creatures yet. Yeah, cannibals, easy. Uh, nature, fuck that. Bye, turkey. Bye, go at. Bye. This world was definitely a struggle to survive in. I swear, every time I sneezed too hard, I felt hungry and needed to guzzle a gallon of water. My fellow raft mates had a solution to this, but I very much disagreed. Try dying, dude. It works. No! We're not dying, we just go to sleep and wake up full. I'm not doing what all the cool kids are doing, alright? I'm gonna be the one doing different thing. When mama says, if all your friends jump off a bridge, do you jump too? That jump first. Towards the end of the night, our raft smashed into another island and decided to spin around faster than a Beyblade at Friday recess. Shark was mean. <laughs> whoa, whoa, why is the boat spinning? Why did the boat just spin in a circle? With the raft straightened out and everyone currently conscious, we were off to our next island. At this point in our journey, we were into a pretty good loop of stopping at an island, gathering resources from it and the ocean floor, and then sailing and collecting more items along the way. This loop included opening decorations. Open the present, open the present, what do we got? We got a fire basket. What? We can throw baskets of fire at each other. On the 11th day, Adam crafted our second shark bait to throw for Kenny the third. Perfect. I spent the rest of the day chopping trees down on the island and admiring the progress we've made on our raft. Dude, our freaking raft looks sick as shit from the top of this island. Look you guys, I'm up here. Before complete nightfall, I was able to head into the ocean and get my very first dose of seaweed. Rolling into the morning of day 12, I was super excited as I found my very first metal ore. I was going to need a lot of this to craft things here in the near future, so it was a major win. I made my way back to the raft just in time for Danny to have researched vine goo which gave us the knowledge to create water bottles, sweep nets, the oh so beautiful bow, and flippers. Soon after, I crafted a medium crop plot and planted our very first pineapple seeds. A lot was happening as Adam built a smelter and immediately filled it with a white powdery substance. Is that sand yeah, to turn to glass? Yeah. Nice. My crap! 
I turned around to see my pineapple plant had already been eaten by a bird, so I crafted up a scarecrow to keep the pesky buggers away. Today was an exhausting day, so I decided to take a load off and relax in my sweet new sofa to end the night. Sail us off into the sunset. <sighs> The 13th day of sunlight was upon us. I took my first metal ore and placed it down into the smelter to make a metal ingot. Then I got to work on my house, which seems a little weird. I'm not quite sure why we all didn't just collectively build one big house or just work on expanding our resource gathering, but we'll figure that out on like day 60 or something. No, instead of working together on furthering our livelihood, we have arguments about hooking items. I'm just better at hooking. Yeah, that's it. You're a better hooker than me. Hooker's I mean, better. I just have a better hooker. You have a better hooker, yeah. Yeah, my hooker is a professional. My hooker has way more experience than your hooker. No, not me, not me. No, make hooker. it sound weird, it's just my hooker, hooker that I'm using <laughs> as a tool. <laughs> By day 14, ADHD had taken over full bore and I had no clue what sort of mess of a house I was making. Then we love tapped into an island which didn't make matters any better. Guys, guys, there's a big thing up there. <laughs> Last time we went to an island this size, it didn't bode well for us. We were no more prepared this time than we were previously. Except this time we grouped up together as one unstoppable unit. And the first victim on our path of destruction was this big meaty boar. Let's mess this thing up. G give me that big meat. <sighs> oh! oh. Oh my god! Come here, nerd! Mm. Oh. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! Oh, I just died. I, I don't know if we can kill this. The boar did manage to knock me on my booty cheeks, but the rest of the fam was still stabbing fearlessly. And it wasn't long after that our first boar was finally defeated. Oh, oh the beast dead! The beast dead. dead! With the beast finally wiped out, we could venture deeper into this beautiful island, parkouring through caves and trekking up the rocky terrain until we came across something sparkly. A satellite dish! What's up here? This was our very first encounter with the trading outpost. This here would be what we traded trash cubes into to get special bait that we would in turn catch all sorts of colorful sea critters. But with all of us being monkey brained, we had no clue what trash cubes were or where to get them. Not letting go of the monkey brain trend, I found some goats and decided to try and shank the rare variation of the goat until my spear broke. I uh. spent a really long time trying to kill the goat last time. I never did it. Clueless as to the multiple rarities passed up, we headed back to the raft yet again to set sail. My humble abode was still in need of dire attention, so I decided to throw a door on it and some walls to box everything in, as well as finally move my crop plot and scarecrow. I dropped a second crop plot to help get some things moving along for food. Later in the night, we got presented with some beautiful dolphins and talk about our knowledge on Kenny the Third. There's a shark somewhere. I heard it. It went gar. <laughs> With day 20 slapping us in the face, we reflected together as a family. It is officially day 20. Day 20, woo woo woo, let's go. Ooh, we haven't done any of the storyline. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't done a damn thing in the storyline. Yeah. But all that is fine because who needs to progress in the story when you got a big old grill for grilling? Let me put that big fishy on the grill. Yeah. Day 21 was filled with haters. Island ahoy. I am an island boy. Oh, shit. And evil seagulls. Move, seagull. Get, shoot. Get out of here. Damn, Kenny. <laughs> oh my god. Get out of here. These upcoming days were about to get exciting. Today, I finally crafted the bow. Though I didn't fully know how to use it, and I somehow had the skill to shoot it one-handed, I knew this bow was destined for me. Adam, look at this. Adam, does this hurt you? When I move my head, it's in my eye. As well as destined for shredding Kenny the Third into little shark kiblets. I finally found a nice place to start putting my larger chests and crafted a smelter to put inside my corner of the raft. I think the first thing I was super excited about on our journey was something that most wouldn't be, the crafting of my first water bottle. This now meant I could drink three whole cups of fresh water before I needed to refill the bottle. For sure, this would be my saving grace. Unfortunately, the same could not be said about our dear pal Adam. What happened? Sean, where are we? I don't know. Where are you guys? Far away. Sean, are you with me? You're in the water? Bad things happen. I don't even see the raft anymore. Oh, yeah. How did you do that? What happened? I just, I, I picked up Sean and I teleported. 
Adam and Sheen managed to pull off some Gryffindor level magic again and appeared back onto the raft. With their return, we did encounter another large island, though much didn't happen here other than me crafting a metal axe and Sheen getting pelted with a boulder. Not long after, we did finally gather the resources to craft an advanced purifier. This would allow us to clean up to 5 cups of water at a time, without the need of planks for fuel, as opposed to our old purifier which only cleaned 1 cup of water at a time and required lots of wood. On the path of building things to make our lives easier, Danny also built a large crop plot for growing trees, something we would also neglect until day 60. The morning of day 28 started out a little bit violent as I finally taught that seagull a lesson about touching things that don't belong to you. Later that day, things got a little less violent as we finally researched a circuit board giving us access to multiple new things such as antennas, the receiver, a sprinkler, and a juicer. Compounded on top of that, we also researched a water bottle. This would allow us to craft an oxygen bottle to be able to stay underwater for longer. Overall, this was a great day even with Adam's statement for the upcoming large island. I'm gonna deforest this entire island. Kenny the fourth decided today was the day he was going to try and take revenge for the Kiblets incident, but got himself arrowed in the face instead. While feeling some remorse for the way things went with Kenny, my mood was brightened up by my new little friends. <gasps> Whoa, the school of fish! Holy crap! <laughs> this looks what's up, fishy? This looks so cool in VR. Hi, fishies! Oh my god, I'm gonna draw me because it's so cool. With my mindset finally in the right place, I destroyed the livelihood of Kenny V. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Making my way back to the raft, I suddenly remembered that I could craft an oxygen bottle. So I taped up the bottle, strapped it to my face, and set back off into the ocean to collect some more loot. This time, finding something new. Oh, there's a crate down here. There's a supply crate under the water. Oh, there are scrap and metal ingots in the supply crate. With resources in hand and my energy running low, I headed back to the raft to get a good night's rest. Another milestone in our journey has arrived now that we hit day 30. We celebrated a little bit by building a cooking pot to brew up some delicious concoctions. Within this time span, Adam had built a beautiful little cabin made on his corner of the raft, Danny was still planning some things out aesthetically, and she nailed his minimalistic aesthetics. And of course, I still have an extreme case of ADHD. Oh, remember how I said before that I could shoot my bow with one hand? Well, I finally learned how to shoot it with two hands. There have been stories told of cruel evils lurking deep within the waters that are far worse than Kenny. And today was the day I finally encountered one of those evils. Ooh. Oh! Don't attack me. Where'd you go? Did I kill you? I did. God! That is the ugliest fish I've ever seen. From the puffy boy, I got some explosive goo, which I was able to dry out in the smelter, and research to learn net canisters for catching animals. But before we got to that point, we needed to get some story items built because it was already day 31 and we hadn't done anything. I crafted up one of the main story items, the receiver, and found out that it needed to be elevated above the base level of the raft to function properly. So I asked our good pal Adam nicely if we could build it on top of his house. Fuck you. Wait, what do you want to build in my house? An antenna. Oh, okay. I spy. With Adam's gracious approval, we placed the Garmin GPS on his roof and placed an antenna down to hopefully get some signal. We didn't realize that we needed three antennas, so I built another one to place down only to find out that I left the receiver on and that the battery had died. Instead of continuing on and getting the receiver actually working, I got distracted like a little moth. Oh, you made twinkle lights? It looks like you every this, like, girl's dorm college dorm room. Yeah, that was my goal. I'm like the dude from Jimmy Neutron, Mr. The Professor whatever with the half a tank and, and a don't half a eaten donut. Calamitous. <laughs> yeah, that guy. I finally set the distractions aside and focused back down on getting this receiver working. I popped a new battery in it just to find out that the new antennas that I placed were too close to one another. So I grabbed them back up and threw them a few more blocks away from one another, booted the receiver on, and finally we had a signal. I figured that the story island we needed to head to was the blue one because it seemed like the odd one out of the bunch, but who knows, maybe my deductions are wrong. First heading towards the actual story on day 33. I woke up on the 34th to see Sheen and Danny speed paddling to the large island near us. And of course, Danny took a slip right into the ocean. Oh my <laughs> god! Hey yo, speed racer, you mind slowing down a second? Making our way onto yet again another regular island, it was filled with dangers like boars, birds, and gravity. Someone stop. Whoever's walking on the island, stop. Look up towards the tippity top. 
<laughs> so I ran up the side of the mountain to grab Adam because apparently yeeting yourself off a cliff is easier than eating a pineapple. Danny must have been thinking the same thing because both Sheen and I had to carry these two goons all the way back to the raft. Hey, hey what's hey, uh, up, dead fam? Hey, Danny. You died too? <laughs> my shark mon is better than your shark mon. Yeah, well, my shark mon is bigger than your shark mon. <laughs> I would soon be eating my words about how easy it was to survive on the island because I was now without any water. Sheen brought me back to rest up in Adam's fresh hammock, and I awoke to some more new technology upon our raft, the juicer. Oh, that makes me feel all sorts of ways. Seeing the juicer's marvelous work and the way Adam had his recipes laid out, I ran over to the cooking pot to drop my recipe off on the board. Cool, I didn't realize you could place this right here. We got vegetable soup on the other cooker now. Chef Adam wasted no time and ran over to show us how it was done. The yes. magic? Yes. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> nice! It turned into a delectable steamy bowl of soup that defied the laws of gravity. In case you almost forgot about our pal, we removed Kenny the Sixth from existence, grabbed his jerky, and set sail for our next destination, which would hopefully be the Story Island. But when do things ever go our way? Of course we did something wrong and somehow sailed past the island, and there weren't enough paddles in all of Raflandia to be able to get us back. We were now at the mercy of the wind until we could get close enough to the island again. Day 39 brought along some thirstiness and more or less my want to use the juicer that Adam built. Look at it go in there. Mmm, yeah, that looks like, it reminds me of Vaporeon Smachi. Mmm. All right, I'm sorry. After checking the receiver one more time, it seems that we are finally on track to the first story area. Some might think by day 40 we should have figured things out. But nobody could prepare us for what happened next. Guys, she jumped. Yeah. What do you mean she jumped? Wait, where's Danny? Danny jumped. Danny jumped where? Into the ocean. What? She's gonna drown no. again. Like she's been drowning. She's been drowning a lot. I just watched her ride away on a whale. She rode away on a whale. Jumped in and it just took her that way. Did she ride the whale or go in yep. the whale? Rode the whale. With Danny now off riding a whale somewhere in the ocean, we needed to find her and somehow progress on our journey at the same time. Mourning for our loss by remembering what she had built, her side of the raft still managed to torture me. Get ready to drop the oh. anchor. Oh no, I fell in the water. I can't get out, I can't get out, I'm stuck. Damn it, Danny, your side of the raft is like a Chinese finger trap. Nearing suffocation, I got back on the raft to be shocked that we could finally see the first story location. It appeared to be some broken down, abandoned radio tower. As hard as it was to go forward, we couldn't let our losses stand in the way of destiny. It was time to shove those emotions down deep and proceed forward like the Kenny Slayers we were. We gathered up the food and water we had and headed into the broken structure. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, it's, oh my shit. Hi, Kenny. Hey, come on. Oh, we gotta wait for the water to raise us. Oh, there we go. I'm up here. Hey. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, caught a shark. Named him Bruce. His name's Kenny, not Bruce. Thank you very much. Not long after, Sheen found a room with a blueprint for a headlamp, as well as a note on the wall. Oh, Trade, oh. That? Owl? Nope, it's not louder. Balboa Island. The main story here is that three engineers by their sweet bird code names, Cuckoo, Owl, and Sparrow, stopped into this radio tower to see if it worked. They were trying to reach a place called Selene where they needed to help work on a reactor that was being built. Sparrow starts getting quiet and not talking to his friends, and one night disappears with the boat, leaving Owl and Cuckoo stranded. Cuckoo is hopeful that Sparrow had a good reason, while Owl yells that he just betrayed them. There are multiple signals coming into the tower, and Cuckoo thinks one of them might be Sparrow trying to communicate. Eventually, we made it to the top of the tower in hopes to find some answers, but we were left with more confusion. This is where we found the mystery woman, Tala. She complimented us on how big our raft was and then disappeared into thin dust. It was definitely a strange encounter since nothing that we found ever mentioned anyone named Tala. We got a recycler blueprint from here which Adam picked up as well as a picture of some place called Pop Tropica or something. Playing in VR must have immersed us too much because instead of picking up the note like a normal person, we just tried to look at what the number said and then jumped off the tower. Yeah, I guess our smooth brains thought that 1234 was an acceptable coordinate number. Getting back onto the raft, nighttime was approaching so I crafted some torches for the front of my house and joined joined Adam on his back deck. <laughs> what you doing, Adam? Relaxing. By the morning of day 42, we had already left not knowing that we still didn't have the right coordinates. So, you know we're gonna be coming back. But until that time, I'm gonna continue adding onto my house just like this to make it ever more beautiful. Look at that. I love this game's Ooh. building. 
I gave the inside of my house some sparkle with a couple strands of twinkle lights, crafted a couple of advanced purifiers to increase my fresh water supply, and turned Kenny the Seventh into a delicious shark kebab. That would have been amazing. He's so low. Wow, there you go. Yeah. Dad, let's go. Things were really starting to look good by the 44th. I had tons of storage going on in my house, multiple smelters, and a little beet farm, which some people take offense to apparently. I hope you burn your beets. <gasps> Don't you dare. I hope they taste like charcoal. <sighs> You're so wow. Yeah. Just just wow. Yeah. Put that back. The only thing I'm busy fucking here is Kenny. Adam began work on revamping the center of our raft so that we could raise the sail and move the receiver off of his house. This would also leave us more room underneath for the anchor and to build community items around it. Adam's building skills were at peak operational level and the center was all cleaned up and rebuilt by the next morning. This looks really good, Adam. It like does look really nice. Sheen decided to tack on a recycler so that we could finally start crushing up garbage and turning it into trash cubes to give to traders. Boom. <gasps> Look at it. Oh. Whoa. Wait, if I put my hand up? It took us many days to finally start noticing that we weren't going anywhere. The code we had entered into the receiver was for sure wrong and we were trying to figure out what we were missing. But that's where we were. Did we not unlock another tab? What we needed to do was retrace our steps back to the radio tower, so we put the old code back in and began our backtrack. This journey on back would still come with its fair share of fun along the way, like expanding our grilling section to three big grills. Enough to make all the suburban dads envious. We also made a quick pit stop to the nearest island because Sheen wanted to test his flight skills he learned in the forest. What up, G? What up, G? Oh my god! Day 47 hit us faster than Sonic drinking a G Fuel, and we really wanted to get back to the radio tower to make sure that we didn't waste any more precious time. We need to go, uh, um, frontward. Frontwards! Frontwards! In the meantime, to prepare for the inevitable, we crafted some net launchers and net canisters. These will be used to trap precious animals, in which we will take advantage of them for our own personal gain. And we'll snuggle them. Oh, look at this bad boy! Look at this mambo jumbo! Hey, yo! Hey yo, you better you better stick them up. Stick kill shot, shot! You came to the wrong raft! Bah! Oh shit. We were closing back in on the radio tower rapidly, ready to find what it was that we were missing. As soon as we arrived, we parkoured up the tower like little ninjas. And it was here that we found what we were missing the entire time. Okay, no, that's a barrel up here. That's the recycler. We got this. It lets us pick up the note now. Really? You and I grabbed at it. Let me look at the notebook now. Yep, there we go, people, 0016. We cheered and drank to success in finally making some progress. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. He is on the raft in the sea. Taking our smooth brains back up to the receiver, I input the actual coordinates this time, and what do you know, an island actually showed up. All right, we are 1800 meters. We gotta head north yonder. The anchor was raised and we were off to see what was waiting for us at the end of the next blue dot. But between us and that blue dot was another juicy looking island. And of course, none of us could resist the temptation and I mean, come on, it was day 49 and we had already completed one whole story island. We had plenty of time left. With that, we banked our raft on the beach and headed inwards to show our dominance to these peaceful land creatures. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to kill- I'm gonna have to kill the bacon. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! No you don't, no you don't! Freaking nerd, what you gonna do about it? You gonna do nothing. Yeah, maybe he won't do anything, but his buddy sure rocked my world. Mm. Oh, oh, damn! Oh, there's an- I'm gonna need some help. That's something we weren't going to take lightly, so I headed back in with a vengeance. But that vengeance is only going to get me so far. Oh, there's a deer? Ooh. Oh, it's a goat. No, let me dodge. If I get hit once by the rock, I'm gonna die. No, God! Bird. The big old 5-0 was upon us, and there was no way I was gonna sit by and let this pocket monster wannabe one-tap me any longer. Yeah. No, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't. Land, land, there we go. Yes! Woo, you got it. Ooh. You get it, Ted. Yes. Oh! <laughs> oh, I'm totally gonna wear that. With all threats eliminated, we set out for our main goal on this island, finding a source of wool to bring back to the raft. Hey, let him go at. 
Yeah! Yeah! Oh my god! I got the girl at- Oh shit, no! Are you kidding me? Did you just let it go? No. You're wasting so much. Taking our captured goat back to the boat, we both had a pressing thought. What are we naming him? We can name him. What should we name him? Satan. Satan. All right, come on, Satan. Hey, Satan, guess what? Get a drink of this. <laughs> Satan was going to have a very comfy stay on our raft as Sheen made him a very nice enclosure to thrive in. Oh, wow, a nice, you get a nice pen here. All right, close the door. All right, Satan. There you go. We are both a bunch of dingus waffles as it became very apparent that the goat could not be sheared to get any wool, making Satan basically useless to us. I guess we could milk him, but nobody wants Satan milk. So it was back to the island we go, in search of a different animal that could properly provide some wool. At this point in time, we were exactly halfway through our journey of surviving 100 days in the world of Raft. We had built a half-decent Raft, devoid of any actual ways to get renewable resources. We now own a useless goat named Satan, and we have been to a grand total of one story island. The next 50 days were about to ramp up to an incredible amount of progress that I'm not quite sure we could comprehend at this time. There were still a lot of questions to be answered as well, like where is all the bleach coming from and where in the world did Danny end up? All of this and more will be answered in the next 50 days of 100 days in Raft VR. Thanks again for watching and to see part 2 which should be out soon after this video is released, make sure to click the link in the description below. Also if you enjoy this and really want to help make future content possible, feel free to click the join button and become a member of the channel. Any amount helps as this is what I do full time. Until next time nerds, never give up. Peace on out.